This is Trend Following Radio, where great thinking comes alive. Nobel Prize winners, legendary traders, best-selling authors, and the pros that know what drive us irrational human beings. I am your host, Michael Covell. Not filtered, raw, honest. That's my passion. I'm going to play a chapter from my audiobook for my book, Trend Commandments. But before I play it, a little setup. Media is so invasive, so pervasive, so everywhere with the same voices for so long, we forget about how much bullshit it is. We forget that these people are reading teleprompters. We forget that these people are not the best and the brightest. They're hired hands. They're flunkies. They're pushed out there to say something that a big corporation wants to say. Maybe it's bullshit. Maybe it's just to attract eyeballs. Maybe they're just dumber than a box of rocks. Actually, it's not that they're maybe dumb as a box of rocks. They are. We're not talking about the high achievers. We're talking about people that got inside of corporate media machines, worked their way up, got on screen, and here we are. But the sad thing is, they're influential. People turn it on and they listen. And they don't often question. They don't know to question. They hear something on some talk show, some financial talk show, some interview. They accept it as face value. I'm not very good at accepting anything at face value. Not to go into it again, because I have a long-standing dislike for something like a CNBC. Not a hatred or anything. It is what it is. But just a dislike. The immoral, untruthful nature of something like it. With this all in mind, let me play this chapter from my book, Trend Commandments. Yes, it's a few years ago. But yes, it's timely. It shows how a typical voice, in this case, Joe Kiernan of CNBC fame, who is interviewing trend follower David Harding, it shows how Kiernan doesn't have a clue. Or if he does have a clue, it's even worse to think that. Well, I guess it's not really worse to think that. I mean, propaganda is propaganda. It happens all the time. So let's don't be silly about that. Without any further delay, I hope you find some lessons, some insights in how the mainstream media is designed from the ground up to fill your head with 100% bullshit. Enjoy. Chapter 56 Extras Every bet you make with your money involves a decision to risk something of value, time, money, or emotional involvement for an uncertain prospect of gain. Placing winning bets over the long run requires constant decisions in the face of innumerable trade-offs. That is life and the trend following life. Whether sunny or bleak, convictions about the future satisfy the hunger for certainty. We want to believe, and so we do. Surprise, surprise, surprise. Earlier in the chapter, Systematic Trend Following, I included a small excerpt from CNBC's Aaron Burnett interviewing trend-following trader David Harding a few years back. On April 8, 2011, CNBC anchor Joe Kernan interviewed Harding as well. At the time of that interview, Harding's firm, Winton Capital, was managing $21 billion in assets for clients via trend-following strategies. Now that you have read Trend Commandments, consider Kernan's interview and my questions that follow. Kernan started the interview reading from a piece of paper that described Harding as a systematic trend-follower who believes scientific research will succeed in the long run. He wondered out loud if computers were used and asked Harding to describe his trading strategy. Harding, on remote from London, responded that his firm goes with the flow. 
he follows trends and makes money going long on rising markets and short on declining markets. He mentioned that there had been enough trends for his firm to make money nearly every year for the last 15 years. Kernan pounced, wondering whether he could blame Harding and other trend followers for oil and gold going higher and for the pendulum swinging much further than it should on a fundamental basis. Harding thought there might be some truth to Kernan's point, but there was only so much time to elaborate. Kernan, under his breath, with a huge, wide smile emerging, interjected at that acknowledgement, Um, yeah. Harding reminded Kernan that his firm was limited by speculative position limits set by the government, and that his trading size was tiny by comparison to major investment banks. Harding went on to further clarify that he doesn't trade by a gut feel. He added, We don't just make it up. He also didn't apologize for his scientific approach to markets, an approach he defined as rigorous. Kernan replied with a shot across the bow, bringing up failed hedge fund long-term capital management, LTCM. He saw it as ironic that LTCM folded in the same year, 1997, that Harding's firm launched. I heard science, and I heard you've never had a down year, and it reminded me of LTCM. Kernan talked sarcastically about the Nobel Prize winners at LTCM, their algorithms, and the fact that they never had a down year until their blow-up. Harding quickly clarified that his firm did have a down year in 2009, and that his performance success actually went back over two decades, 23 years to be exact. He noted that his first firm, AHL, which he sold, was now the world's largest managed futures fund. He also addressed LTCM head-on, stating that the book, When Genius Failed, the story of LTCM blowing up, was required reading at his firm. Kernan, with condescension, quipped, I bet it is. He then went on to ask Harding if he could provide some of his best picks. That question makes perfect sense for every fundamental trader who thinks he can predict the future, but it is a ridiculous question to ask a trend-following trader. Harding replied that he could not forecast markets. I can't give you best picks. He pointed out that his success comes from having a slight edge and proper betting. Kernan, still not about to acknowledge anything positive about trend following, smugly asked if Harding would know when the party was over. Harding was nonplussed, noting that there had been a long history of successful trend following going back 40 years. He also compared 2010 to 2011's great trending markets to another era, the 1970s. Kernan, with little journalistic objectivity, shot back that he had heard those kinds of expressions before. Please let there be another real estate boom because I spent all the money I made. I heard commodities guys saying that for a while too. He then wrapped up with standard pleasantries and one last zinger, hoping that Harding could come back again with the same moniker and same title. Before analyzing the interview, consider a definition of critical thinking. Critical thinking is the intellectually disciplined process of actively and skillfully conceptualizing, applying, analyzing, synthesizing, and or evaluating information gathered from or generated by observation, experience, reflection, reasoning, or communication as a guide to belief and action. In its exemplary form, it is based on universal intellectual values that transcend subject matter divisions, clarity, accuracy, precision, consistency, relevance, sound evidence, good reasons, depth, breadth, and fairness. With that in mind, here are some questions to ponder. 1. Is it believable that Joe Kernan, the anchor of CNBC's longest-running program, had no knowledge and or comprehension of trend following, or other descriptions of it such as managed futures or CTAs? If he was forced to raise his right hand under the threat of perjury, do you think he would still have such a limited understanding of trend following and managed futures? 2. When Kernan asked about trend followers purportedly pushing markets further than they should be fundamentally, did that mean he had a way to determine the correct price level of all markets at all times? 3. When Kernan brought up long-term capital management, 
in attempt to compare Harding to its demise? Did he not understand that Harding did not believe in efficient markets? Had he ever looked at a monthly up-and-down track record of Harding or any trend follower? 4. Why ask a trend-following trader for picks? 5. When Kernan asked Harding if he would come back with the same moniker and title, was he implying that he believed Harding would blow up soon and be back on CNBC under some reformulated firm name, like what the proprietors of long-term capital management did after their blow-up? Has he ever asked Warren Buffett that question? I can easily see some painting this interview differently. Harding set himself up for the LTCM tie-in by framing himself as a computer science shop looking at data and being black box. You have to expect Kernan to kick you. That's what he does. Just like you know what you're going to get from Glenn Beck or Stephen Colbert. Harding basically says, we're the smartest guys on the planet. Trends work and we look at a lot of data. One reader, a reader who runs a fundamental advisory service, wrote me, Whether Kernan's questions were clueless or not is really irrelevant. He did not argue with Harding on any point, and he gave Harding a good opportunity, within the time available, to explain how his firm implements trend following. Kernan was an adult in the room. I'm thinking that's the way serious trend followers ought to consider presenting themselves, instead of sarcasm and we don't predict, as if that is an obvious answer to any question. The evidence does not bear those criticisms out. There is a deeper game at play beyond my questions. Joe Kernan is not devoid of academic intelligence. He holds a bachelor's degree from the University of Colorado in molecular, cellular, and developmental biology and master's degrees from Massachusetts Institute of Technology. He worked at several investment banks, including Merrill Lynch. I am no Harding fanboy or apologist, but I have spent time with him. That research time, coupled with his public career and track record, make him one of the most learned trend-trading voices of the past 20 years. It is clear to me that Kernan had a pre-formulated agenda. His questioning was a transparent attempt to marginalize Harding and trend following. Why would Kernan do that? Imagine if the interview started like this. We at CNBC believe in efficient markets and the use of fundamental analysis. Our business model requires viewers to watch. Today, we have a guest on who has made billions with trend-following trading, which does not require fundamental analysis or CNBC. Would you like to know how to make money without ever watching our channel again? Welcome, David Harding. A Kernan ego will never debate this subject on neutral grounds, but that is no surprise. Learn from this interview and the analysis. For those with their eyes wide open, this is yet another money-making confidence builder. I see a time when those awake will understand how to make money in up, down, and surprise markets. Whether new trader or experienced, college student or financial advisor, protecting against a crash, or just trying to make a lot of money. Trend following offers everyone an answer in uncertain times. To get started immediately, send me an email, michael at covell.com. I will send you the right trend following steps to take along with my free video. But if you want to buy and hold, trust the government and trust Wall Street. This is absolutely not for you.